Hello friends, welcome to the Ideasight Network. Our today's topic of discussion is part of our ongoing series on operations research and today we shall talk about game theory and simulation. And for this discussion we have with us in the studio Dr. Subhash Kakar, Hello. PhD and MBA. Dr. Kakar has an experience of more than three decades in the corporate field and uh, since the last six years he is in academics. He is currently a Pro Vice Chancellor in a leading institute in Delhi and uh, before I request him to begin out today's lecture, I will uh, like to tell you his specialization as well which uh, includes operations management, marketing research and organizational behavior amongst many others. So with this uh, let us welcome sir, thank you for coming sir. Thank you Roshi. And uh, we request you to begin our today's lecture sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, welcome viewers. This particular lecture is in continuation of my earlier lectures which were based on the subject operations research. And today's topic I have taken is game theory and simulation and we will see how much we will cover. I will try to cover as much as possible and try to explain the concepts and the theory behind these sub topics. Let us start with the game theory. Game theory is the game played among the players and these players in the management concern, they are competitors for the same particular goal. We can talk about in the organization, union and the management. These two people are called players and they are running the operations of the organization. Union is taking care of the employees and management is taking care of the policies and they have competing goals in front of them. If we say that the goal of management if it is to increase profit, similarly the goal of the union is to improve the salary structure of the employees. Now if we, if we give more salary to the employees, definitely our profit will get reduced by that amount. To that extent, both the players have competing goals in front of them to achieve. Similarly, Players are playing in the market, competitors are selling the product in the market, they are launching new and new products. All these competitors are players in the market and they have a common goal to improve their market share and for that they have different strategies and the strategies could be one player gives a discount of 10 percent on its products. The other player has a strategy. He gives 1 plus 1. If you buy one product, the second product will be free of cost provided. Similarly, one player is giving advertisement in the radio channel the other player is giving advertisement in the TV channel. One player is using magazines for advertisement of the product, the other is using some other means. So different players have different strategies and these strategies are disclosed before they start playing the game. How these are disclosed, these strategies are available in the research papers, management magazines and one can take a decision on the what strategy one should play so that his particular position in the game is optimized, his gains are maximized, his losses are minimized. This is the particular aim in front of any player while playing a game. 
Now we have to see what sort of strategy one should adopt if his decision is like a standalone decision that he takes the decision but it is not the case in the market. One player is to take the decision based on the strategy adopted by other players. So he will have to change his strategy the moment the other players change their strategies. So today we will see how to choose our strategy so that we maximize our gains and minimize our losses and that is the particular thing we have to see in this particular topic. When I say maximizing the profit, it can be maybe maximizing the market share. So we have to have the goal in front of us and for that particular goal all the competitors are playing and they are adopting different strategies. We will learn different terms used in this game theory and then finally we will be trying to be expert in this field so that we are able to choose the proper strategy so that we are able to optimize our situation in the market. Meaning of game theory, it is concerned with the type of decision for a problem characterized by conflict or competition among two or more competitors. Here we have two particular terms. One is there are players in the market and second is they are having conflict or competition. Conflict or competition is based on achieving the goal. Say we want to maximize the market share and that market share is the goal in front of the competitors for which they are to adopt the different strategies. This game theory is concerned with the type of decision for a problem characterized by conflict or competition among two or more competitors and these competitors in different situations can be different people, different set of people as I have already told workers versus management these two players are there, supplier versus supplier. There are suppliers in the market who are supplying products to one particular factory. So one supplier versus the another supplier are the players who are competing for particular goal. Political leader versus political leader, political leader wants to win the poll. So one po political leader versus another political leader, they are the players in the market. Game theory provides systematic quantitative methods for analyzing competitive situation in which the competitors or players make use of logical processes and techniques in order to determine an optimal strategy for winning. So here we have to see that our strategy is to win the game and we are rational thinkers. We cannot play a game to lose it. Our aim is to win the game at all times. That is our main goal. Classification will discuss of the game. It can be classified on the basis of the number of players who are playing the game. These players can be two person game theory. When only two players are there, this is called two person game theory. When more than two, we call it more than two players or n person game theory. Then we have sum of gains and losses. Based on this also, we classify the game, sum of gains and losses and this can be zero sum game. What do I mean by zero sum game is at the end of the game, the sum of gains is zero. If one gets a profit, the other will get the loss and the amount of profit and the amount of loss 
is equal. That is why we call it zero sum game. And then there are games where zero sum is not there. We call them non zero sum game. And the next is what sort of strategy we employ. So, based on the strategy employed, we can classify. Strategy can be defined as an alternative course of action available to the player in advance by which the player decides his action plan. One has seen that the other competitor has given an ad in the radio. Now, he also has different strategies available to him based on the strategies available and the impact these strategies have. So, he will choose his strategy. So, this is the meaning of strategy. Types of strategies, pure strategy, pure strategy is when one player keeps on using only one strat strategy all the times irrespective of the strategy being used by the other competitor or other player. If the player selects the same strategy each time then it is referred to as a pure strategy. Then we have mixed strategy based on the strategy of the other competitor if one keeps on changing his strategy and he is using sometimes one strategy and sometimes other strategy then it is called mixed strategy. When the player use a combination of strategies and each player is kept guessing as to which course of action is to be adopted by the other player on a particular occasion it is known as mixed strategy. So, we have learned pure strategy and the mixed strategy. And now we will have the rules of the game as other games the rule, rules are fixed before starting the game. So, there are certain rules which are pertaining to this particular game theory. The first one is the players act rationally and intelligently. What do I mean by this? The players are rational and intelligent players. They know the different strategies available, available to them and they also know the different strategies available to the other competitor and they also know the result of playing different strategies by other players and by them. So, they are intelligent, they are rational. What do I mean? Uh, what do I mean by rationally? It is they are logical, they are playing to win the game, they are not playing to lose the game. Each player has a finite set of possible courses of action. It means that each player has finite number of strategies available to him and the impact of those strategy strategies is also known to him. The players attempt to maximize gains and minimize losses. Here again we can talk about rational behavior. One is not playing to lose the gains, one is playing to maximize the gains. All relevant information is known to each player. We cannot say this was not known to me and I played a wrong strategy. Each and everything is known to us. And the players are in take, players take individual decisions without direct communication with the other competitors and the players simultaneously select their respective courses of action. It means that if one takes a, takes a strategy, the other also takes another strategy based on the strategy played by the competitor. The payoff is fixed and determined in advance. As I have already told, payoffs of playing different strategies is known to us in advance. Based on that, we take the action. So, these are the certain rules of this game theory. Mixed strategy. I will give a, a little bit description of mixed strategy. Thus, there is a probabilistic situation 
and the objective of the player is to maximize expected gains or minimize expected losses. Mixed strategy is probabilistic in nature. Pure strategy is deterministic in nature. Probabilistic in nature means, say maybe 10 percent of the time, a particular competitor plays strategy A, 20 percent of the time he plays the strategy B and the rest of the time he plays a strategy C. So, this is called probabilistic model and the pure strategy is probabilistic in nature. Mixed strategy again. Mathematically, a mixed strategy for a player with two or more possible courses of action is denoted by the set S, where S is equal to x1, x2, x3, x4 and up to xn subject to the constraint that x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 till x1 is equal to 1 and these are x1, x2 are the probabilities of playing a particular strategy and that sum is 1. It is obvious that sum of all the probabilities will always be 1. So, x i is greater than equal to 0, j is also equal to 1, 2, 3 and n. So, we have talked about pure strategy, we have talked about mixed strategy. Now, optimal strategy, the course of action or a complete game plan that leaves a player in the most preferred position regardless of the actions of his competitors is called the optimal strategy. So, we are looking for optimal strategy which keeps us in the most preferred position. Most preferred position is what? Any deviation from the optimal strategy or plan would result in decreased payoff. So, any deviation from the preferred position, if we move on the plus side, if we move on the negative side, it is going to decrease our payoff. A quantitative payoff is a quantitative measure that is maybe money, percent, market share, etcetera of satisfaction a player gets at the end of the game is called payoff or outcome of the game. So, now we know what is the meaning of payoff in a game theory. Now, we will discuss the value of the game. Value of the game refers to the expected outcome for the players when the players follow their optimum strategy. They play their optimum strategy and what is the outcome and this outcome is called the value of the game and each player wants to maximize his value of the game. So, payoff matrix, we will see how this matrix looks like. This particular table shows the payoff matrix. Look at this table. On first row, we have written player B's strategies. Player B's strategies are B1, B2, till B j and then B n. Similarly, in the first column, we have written the player A's strategies. A has strategies A 1, A 2, A 3 till A j and finally up to A m. So, different strategy written in the first column and first row belong to player A and player B. In between all these figures, where it is written A11, A12, and similarly A21, A22, these are the payoffs. Let us concentrate on the first payoff, A11. A11 is the payoff achieved when player A plays A1 strategy and player B plays B1 strategy. All these figures A11, A12, etcetera are the gains of the player A. One has to remember this particular thing that all these figures which are written in the payoff matrix 
these are the gains of player A. When these are the gains of player A, correspondingly these also denote the losses of player B. So, either these are losses of player B, B or gains of player A. So, payoff matrix always show the gains of player A and the losses of player B. So, I have an example for you. Let us see one payoff matrix. This matrix A player is union in an organization, B player is management. Union has two strategies U1 and U2 and management has again two strategies M1 and M2. Now, if union plays U1 strategy and management plays M1 strategy, then gain to the union is 50 and the loss to the management is also 50. Let us now consider that union is playing U2 strategy and the management is playing M2 strategy, then 30 is the payoff and this is a gain to the union and this is loss to the management. Similarly, other payoffs can be explained. Let us see the payoff 5. Payoff 5 is a result of union playing U1 strategy and the management playing M2 strategy. Now, we have one more example also pure strategies games with saddle points. Now, we will explain what is saddle point and the pure strategy also. This is this is explained by another example. Again, we have a payoff matrix and this particular matrix is a payoff matrix for company A and company B. Company A has available strategies A1, A2, A3 and company B has strategies B1, B2, B3. All these figures written in the inside the table are the gains for the company A and correspondingly losses of the company B. Now, we will see this payoff matrix. Now, we will see that the saddle point is there or not. Saddle point is that point where after playing 2, 3 times the different strategy, the game settles down to one position, to one position and how to find out the saddle point, we have a procedure and I am going to explain that procedure also. And then we are to study the rule of dominance also. What is the rule of dominance? This principle says that if all the elements in a column are greater than or equal to the corresponding elements in another column, then that column is dom dominated and can be deleted from the matrix. Now, we will see what I am telling about in this particular statement. This is talking about the columns. In the payoff matrix, columns denote the strategies of player B which are losses and one does not want to have more losses. If the elements in one column are greater than all other elements in another column, then this particular column can be dele deleted because it has more losses than other column. So, we do not want more losses, player B does not want more losses. So, he will delete one column. When we delete one column means one strategy will be deleted from the matrix. So, that player, player B will never play that strategy where all the elements in the column are greater than corresponding elements in some other column. So, that particular column which has more values can be deleted. And similarly, if we talk about the player, player A, then we will have to talk about the rows. Similarly, if all the elements in a row are less than or equal to the corresponding elements in another row, 
then that row is dominated and can be deleted. Here because rows belong to player A and player A has only gains written in the cells. So, he does not want less gains. So, which the row which is having less values than the corresponding values in the in some other row that row will be deleted because player does player A does not want less gains. So, the row which is having less gains will be deleted and the column which is having more values will be deleted because the column is showing the losses of player B and the rows are showing the gains of player A. So, this is called the dominance principle whichever row or whichever column is dominating that will get deleted. Now, we have another example. In this particular example, all these values are gains of company A and losses of company B. Now, we will see this particular strategy of company A, where the payoff is 516, 516. If we see 516, corresponding to middle row, 5 is less than 6, 1 is less than 2, 6 is less than 7. So, all these values are less than as compared to the values in the middle row. So, this is being dominated by middle row. So, this can be deleted as far as dominance principle is there. So, we are going to delete this. We are going to delete this row from. So, company A will never play A3 game because its values are less than the values written in the middle row. So, this particular row will be deleted as we are using the principle of dominance. Similarly, similarly, if we see the company B and the strategy B3 and if we see the values 2, 7 and 6, 2, 7 and 6, these are the losses of company B, 2 is greater than 1 as compared to the first column. Now, we are comparing the first and the last column. Last column has been put in red color now. Why? I am going to explain it in a moment. So, 2 is greater than 1, 7 is greater than 6, 6 is greater than 5 all these values which are written in the B3 strategy are more than the values written in the B1 strategy. So, this particular column is dominating B1 column. So, this will get deleted from the company B's strategies as far as dominance principle is concerned. So, I am able to explain the dominance principle with respect to the company A and with respect to company B. Now, we are left with only, only two strategies of company A, A1 and A2. Similarly, two strategies of company B, B1 and B2. So, we can delete the third strategy altogether from company A's portfolio and company B's portfolio. Let us see what happens when we remove these strategies. We are left with 1, 7 and 6, 2. We are left with company A's strategies A1, A2, company B's strategies B1, B2. Now, we have to see whether saddle point is there or not, whether saddle point is there or not. And there is a procedure for finding the saddle point and finding that if these two strategies, company A and company B, have a saddle point or not. First, we concentrate on the columns. First column B1 strategy, second column B2 strategy. First column values are 1 and 6. We will write the maximum values of the columns. So, we have to write column maximum values. First column maximum values is 6. Second column maximum value is 7. So, we will write 6 and 7, 6 and 7 as far as columns are concerned. Similarly, for the rows, we will write row minimum values. 
when we are looking at the columns we have to see the maximum values when we are looking at the rows we have to write minimum values so row minima will be written first row minimum value is 1 so we have written 1 second row the minimum value is 2 we have written 2 now again come back to column maximum value 6 and 7 out of these two values 6 and 7 we have to choose the minimum value out of this 6 and 7 minimum is 6 so highlight this value 6 and similarly in the case of rows row minimum value values are written out of this minimum values we have to choose a maximum value maximum value in this case is 2 maximum value in this case is 2 now in the rows maximum value is 2 in the columns minimum value is 6 and these two are different values and the and they belong to different cells in the payoff matrix when such is a case these are having two different values then we say that there is no saddle point in case the reverse happens the column minimax and row maximin are the same one value then it is said that we have a saddle point now let's assume in a particular case 6 is the saddle point though it is not in this particular case we are taking a hypothetical case 6 is the saddle point it means that company a will always play a2 strategy and the company b will always plays b1 strategy to have a payoff of 6 and the value of game in that case will be 6 but in this case we don't have a saddle point here two different points are there as maxima and minimax and maximin so some of the times company a will play a1 strategy and some of the time company a will play a2 strategy similarly company b some of the times will play b1 strategy and rest of the time company b will play b2 strategy but now we have to calculate what is the percentage company b will play b1 strategy and what is the percentage company b will play b2 strategy and similarly company a what is the percentage of playing a1 strategy and what is the percentage of playing a2 strategy so we'll demonstrate how to calculate that and this is the probabilistic model and this is called the mixed strategy if we have a saddle point then it, then it is pure strategy mixed strategies games without saddle point pure strategies are available as optimal strategies only for those games which have a saddle point which i have already explained games which do not have a saddle point can be solved by applying the concept of mixed strategies solution to mixed strategy games because the pure strategy doesn't require any solution because there is only one strategy available to player a and only one strategy available to player b now one thing is to be noted we are now discussing two person game theory and zero sum game theory at the end of the game the sum of the payoffs of one player are equal to the sum of the payoffs of other player and there are four methods available to the solution to mixed strategy games algebraic method analytical or calculus method graphical method 
and linear programming method. Okay. Converting the game theory problem into a LP problem and solving through linear programming method, which we have already explained in my previous lecture. Today we will see how this algebraic method, calculus method and graphical method are used to solve the game with mixed strategies. Now we will concentrate on the algebraic method. Same problem written on the right, written on the left hand top corner, company A having strategies A1, A2, company B is having strategies B1, B2. And we have assumed A1 is played P fraction of times and 1 minus P fraction of times company A plus A2. So, P and 1 minus P and P is the fraction. And similarly, B's strategies, B1 is played Q fraction of the times and B2 strategy is played 1 minus Q fraction of the times. Payoffs are same as 1, 7, 6, 2. It means that A1 strategy when played by company A will give us a profit of 1 unit when company B plays B1 strategy and a profit of 7 units when company B plays B2 strategy. 1 is again the last to company B and 7 is also the last to the company B. This is the meaning of this payoff matrix. Now, how to go about it using algebraic method? How to find out these percentages? Let us find out the value of P, how it is found. P is written in case of A1 strategy and 1 minus P is written in case of A2 strategy. So, we will multiply P by P with 1 and 1 minus P with 6 when company B is playing B1 strategy. So, gains to company A will be P plus 6 times 1 minus P, 6 times 1 minus P and this should be equal to when the company B plays B2 strategy. Equal to means when company A plays A1, the gain will be 7P and similarly, when company A plays A2, the gain will be 2 into 1 minus P, but the in both the cases, these two gains will be same. So, we are equating these two gains P plus 6 into 1 minus P equal to 7 P plus 2 into 1 minus P. By solving this, we will get the value of P as 0.4. Of course, the value of 1 minus P will be 0.6, 0.4 and 0.6. What does it mean then? It means that in the long run, company A will be playing A1 strategy 40 percent of the time and A2 strategy 60 percent of the time. And we have calculated these probabilities and these percentages. And in similar way, we will calculate the values of Q and 1 minus Q. Now, let us see how to calculate. Similarly, Q plus 7 into 1 minus Q, it means the company A is playing A1. When company A is playing A1, the company B will have the losses equal to Q plus 7 into 1 minus Q and these will be equal to 6 Q plus 2 into 1 minus Q and the value of the Q found will be 0.5. So, it means that the company B will be playing 50 percent of time B1 strategy and 50 percent of the time B2 strategy. Now, how to calculate the value of the game? How to calculate the value of the game? The expression which we started with P plus 6 into 1 minus P is nothing but the value of the game. And the value of game, what we have used this method, 
the value of the game in each case we are keeping the same. So, if this principle is used, we will be able to calculate the value of the game. So, value of the game now is 0 0.4 plus 6 into 1 minus 0 0.4. This is the first expression in our calculation p plus 6 into 1 minus p and here we are putting the values of p which is 0.4 and we will get a value of the game 4. So, value of the game in this particular case will be 4. 4 will be the gain to the company A and the corresponding loss to the company B, company B when these two strategies are played by company A and company B. So, this I have demonstrated the algebraic method for calculations of a particular game. The calculations of a particular game are nothing but when we are, we are using mixed strategy, we have to know the percentages fixed to different strategies. So, we are able to calculate the percentages and we are able to calculate the value of the game also. Now, I will demonstrate the calculus method also analytical or calculus method. How to go about using this method? We will write the value of the game as v and v will be equal to nothing but we will multiply these payoffs with the corresponding uh, probability values like p and q 1 minus p and 1 minus q. Let us concentrate on the value of the game which is written by V. V will be in the first left hand cell, the payoff is 1, 1 will get if with the probability of P and Q, P probability is corresponding to A player and Q probability is corresponding to B player. So, we will write P Q and this is written also P Q and similarly, if we see the sec second cell means right hand cell 7 and 7 will have probabilities as p and 1 minus q. So, this is what is written here 7 p into 1 minus q plus corresponding to 6 we have to multiply the probabilities 1 minus p and q will be there. So, we have written uh, q and 1 minus p and for 2 we will have to multiply it with the probabilities 1 minus p and 1 minus q with 2. So, this expression is written as p q plus 7 p into 1 minus q 6 q into 1 minus p plus 2 into 1 minus p into 1 minus q. If we simplify this, we will get v, v is the value of the game p q plus 7 p plus minus 7 p q plus 6 q minus 6 p q plus 2 minus 2 q minus 2 p plus 2 p q. Further simplifying, we will get value of the game is minus 10 p q plus 5 p plus 4 q plus 2. So, this is the main expression after simplifying. What is the expression we get after simplifying is v is equal to minus 10 p q plus 5 p plus 4 q plus 2. Now, we have to use the calculus method. We have to <coughs> differentiate it. We have to use the partial differentiation with respect to first maybe p and the second with respect to q and we will get the values of p and q. So, let us see how we are doing it. First partial differentiation, differentiation with respect to q delta v divided by delta q. So, first differ, uh, differentiation will give you minus 10 p plus 4 if we differentiate with respect to q and we have to maximize the value of the game, we will have to put it equal to 0. When we put it equal to 0, the value of p will be 0.4. Hence, 1 minus p is 0.6. This is the same as we got using the algebraic method. And similarly, with respect to p, differentiation will give us the values minus 10 q plus 5 is equal to 0 or q is equal to 0 0.5 and 1 minus q is also equal to 0 0.5. So, we can put these values of p and q in the first expression and we will get the value of the game as 4, what we received by using algebraic method. So, this is very simple, very clear 
and now we will move on to the next method and that method is graphical method. We can use graphical method also for calculating the value of the game and the percentages of the mixed strategies. I will demonstrate how to use the graphical method. I hope these two methods are clear to the viewers and they can have questions if these are not clear. Now we will use graphical method, same problem now using graphical method. Same problem means company A has strategies A1 and A2, company B has strategies B1, B2, percentage, percentages we have assigned two different strategies are if we see A1 it is P, if we see A2 it is 1 minus P, if we see B1 it is Q and if we see B2 it is 1 minus Q. If the company A plays A1 strategy and company B plays Q strategy the payoff is 1. If the company A plays A1 strategy and company B plays B2 strategy the payoff is 7. If the company A plays A2 strategy and the company B plays B1 strategy the payoff is 6. Similarly, if company A plays A2 strategy and the company B plays B2 strategy the, B, the value of the game is 2 and this is nothing but the payoff matrix. Now we want to know the percentages P and 1 minus P, Q and 1 minus Q and these will correspond to the percentage of the time the company A will play A1 strategy and the company A will play A2 strategy and similarly percentage of the time company B plays Q strategy and the percentage of the time company B plays B2 strategy. For this to be solved by graphical method we will have to use a graph, graph sheet or we will have to make our own graph. Let us see how to make it. First x axis is drawn straight x axis is drawn and straight y axis is also drawn. A parallel vertical line is also drawn. What I have done? I will explain it again. x axis horizontal line is drawn, y axis passing through the 0 is drawn and a parallel vertical line is also drawn distance between these two vertical lines is equal to complete one probability. So, we will start from 0 and we will end it at 1 in between mid middle point will be 0.5. So, starting with 0 probability ending up to 1 and in between at middle point the probability is 50 percent or 0.5. Now, what next is to be done? We will have to mark the divisions 1, 2, 3 like this. On left hand side as well as on the right hand side. Number of divisions are given by the payoff matrix. So, whatever is the maximum payoff that is to be taken as a guideline for maximum number of divisions. In our payoff matrix the maximum payoff is 7. So, 7 divisions minimum 7 divisions are to be taken in the vertical lines means vertical axis. So, on the right hand side also the corresponding 7 divisions are to be marked. And 7. So, I have marked 7 divisions on the 2 vertical lines and then divisions also marked also like this. So, 7 divisions rather 8 divisions I have marked on the left hand vertical line and similarly on the right hand vertical line I am marking these. 
divisions. So, number of divisions must be equal to the maximum value on the payoff. So, on the left hand, on the right hand, I have marked these 7 divisions. Now, what is to be done now? Now, we have to mark these strategies. For the company A, we will get the values of P and 1 minus P. How to get it? We will draw a straight line from 1 to 6. A 1 strategy, the payoff is 1. A 2 strategy, the payoff is 6. Now, we have to remember 1 is to be marked on the right hand side vertical line. So, that whatever percentages we will get, these will be for player A and the value of P only. So, 1 is marked on the right hand side, 6 is marked on the left hand side vertical line and line straight line is drawn. And similarly, 7 and 2 are also to be marked. 7 is with respect to A1 strategy and 2 is with respect to A2 strategy. 7 will marked on the right hand side vertical line and 2 will mark on the left hand side vertical line and we will draw the line and we will draw the line. So, this is very simple, but one has to be very careful. One can start from the left hand side vertical line also, but in that case we will get the value of 1 minus p and not p. To get the value of p straight, we will start from the right hand vertical line, we will mark the point 1, we will mark the point 6 for the first line and we will join these two points with a straight line. We will mark the point 7, we will mark the point 2 and we will join them with a straight line. The point of intersection will give the value of p. So, let us see what is this point of intersection. Okay. And this point of intersection on the x axis will give, give us the value of p and which is 0.4 and 0.4 we have already calculated with algebraic method and we have all also calculated using calculus method. So, this is 0.4. So, 40 percent of the time company A will play A 1 strategy and similarly, similarly we can get the value of Q also. For Q we will have to mark the points 1 and 7, 6 and 2 and the point of intersection will give the value of q. Here we have got the value of p and the second graph if we make, we will join 1 and 7 and 6 and 2 and the corresponding point of intersection will get the value of q. Of course, this will be 50 percent because we have already calculated using algebraic method and we have also calculated using uh, calculus method. Now, we have to see the value of the game. Value of the game will be given on the vertical lines. This particular point of intersection and corresponding value on the vertical axis means y axis will give us the value of the game. First point of intersection on the x axis, we have received the value of p as 0.4 and the corresponding value on the y axis. This is the y axis and this is 4. So, this is a graphical method of calculating the mixed strategies, percentages and the value of the game. So, value of game is 4. We have seen it on the x axis as a value of p and correspondingly value of 1 minus p will be 0.6. It means that company A will play A1 strategy 40 percent of the time and company A will play A2 strategy rest of the time. Rest of the time means 60 percent of the time 
company A will play A2 strategy. By doing this, the value of the game will be 4. And if we draw a similar graph for the company B, we will get the value of Q as 0 0.5 as we have already calculated in the algebraic method and calculus method and we will get the value of the game as 4. So, we have demonstrated three methods, algebraic method, calculus method and the graphical method and the viewer can use any one of these three methods rather four methods. The fourth method is linear programming method. One can use LP also to solve the problem, whatever one feels easy and then we have software also available to solve these problems. Automatically we will get the percentages of the mixed strategies and the value of the game. So, now we are clear that most of the time players have mixed strategies. Hardly one has only pure strategy. Pure strategy belongs to the saddle point. When we have a saddle point, then it means that the players are having only pure strategy. When we do not have saddle point, the players are using mixed strategy and in that case, we have to calculate the percentages of the different strategies. And there are four methods of calculating percentages and corresponding value of the game. Now, we have a topic simulation. Before that, I want to again explain the mixed strategy and the pure strategy and the saddle point. What is meant by saddle point? What is meant by Let us go to the previous slide where we have the table giving us the payoff values. Here let us see this one. There are two strategies. Now let us see A1 plays, company A plays A1 strategy 1 and 7. Now B has a choice. B wants to minimize its losses. So, B will play B1 strategy of course, because, because out of 1 and 7 B1 is the minimum. So, 1 is minimum which belongs to B1 strategy. When B player plays B1 strategy and the A player wants to maximize the profit out of 1 and 6 the company A will play A2 strategy. When company A has played A2 strategy then company B's turn is there company B will try to minimize the losses. So, company B will play B2 strategy. So, it shows that how the companies are shifting from one strategy to the other to optimize the value of the game. So, this has explained the game theory. Today's lecture we have concentrated on game theory and we have taken up one example to demonstrate all the three methods. Of course, this was a simple example just to demonstrate. Now, we are clear about all the terms used in game theory and different methods of calculations used in game theory. Viewers can ask any question on this particular topic. Next class, we will have, have a discussion on simulation. Right. Uh, thank you so much, sir. And uh, sir has uh, clearly summed up uh, what was covered in today's lecture. So, with that we would like to bring this to a close and thanks sir for being here today for sparing his uh, valuable time and talking about uh, game theory. Thank you friends for watching. Have a wonderful day.